And you give you know get time with traffic back and on. It doesn't it doesn't work out the best order. It just finds the best way to get to each in the order you provide. Yes, that's right. Interesting. Um, and also, this um, couple of APIs are really useful. So, given a uh, latitude and longitude and a geo point, you can call the map location finder, and it will find the nearest um, postal address. So, you can actually uh, come back with the, a description of for given a lat long. And of course, the converse of that is uh, you can give it a, a an address, a string that kind of represents an address and it will try and parse it. It sends this up to the cloud, of course. It try and figure out what it is exactly you uh, you meant. Um, and actually this API as well, if it's not quite sure, it'll send you back a kind of disambiguation list. So you can easily build into your app, uh, you know, enter, enter an address and it'll go off and try and find it and then it, it will come back and you can put up another bit of UI that says, did you mean, and give them a list and they can select the right one. So Are all easy. of these services online only, calling out to web services? Uh, they are online only, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so in review, what you saw there was how to build, how to launch the built-in map. So for many apps where you just want to add a little bit of mapping capability to display a map, that's going to be the easy way to do that. Virtually a couple of lines of code to. to it means you don't have to create a developer account on the maps portal or yep. anything. You that's just right. boom, you get it. Yep. And what if it's not installed? I, that you, can you uninstall the maps app? I think you can. You yeah. call Bing colon, like, does it work Bing, like... Bing maps colon, yeah. So actually that was just the example that launches our built-in maps app. But there are other mapping apps that also have their own URI scheme. So uh, and as, with, as with any of these um, protocol launching things, if on the device where you try and launch it, you haven't right. got anything that matches, the, the, the platform will come back to you and say, oh, we haven't got anything that understands That's it. what's beautiful. Do you want to go to the store and find something? And then it will, you could take you straight to the store and give you a list of, of appropriate maps you could then download and install. So that's cool. That's yeah. very nice. And then, and we, then the control itself. And the control, we, this, is, this is like, you know, if you really want to get down in the weeds and do something really unique with mapping, then this, this is the control for you. Nice. Um, and that's kind of, yeah, you, you're really doing some, a lot of coding and building your own mapping uh, solution. And then we finally had a quick look at some of the services that help you to convert from lat long and, and, uh, and get, get routes and things like that. Get routes. Get routes, yes. So this is the developer guide to Windows 10 preview. So Windows 10 is in preview, but we have a lot of neat stuff that you can already start to play with. This is the maps control and the ability to use maps from a URI. Go play with that and see if it's a, it's a useful tool for you to add to your application. Then come back and join us for another module soon. Hi, this is the Developer's Guide to Windows 10 Preview. I'm Andy Wigley, a developer evangelist working out of Microsoft in the UK. And I'm Jerry Nixon, also a developer evangelist out of the United States here in Colorado. Cool. And this is a session about uh, inking support in Windows 10. Very exciting technology available across all our platforms now uh, and a new API. That's right. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about pen and ink. Windows 10 really brings it to us. We've, we've dabbled in other platforms and other, other iterations. Now we've really got it going on. So we'll talk about a little bit about why ink and then what Windows 10 really brings to us. So let's consider this. Why ink in the first place? Well, what could be more human than inking? I mean, it's what, the way that we can really express ourselves. It's very immediate, right? You can grab, it, grab a, a napkin and start drawing your idea and people immediately can start to, to be in the same mindset as you. That's that's what inking can bring to your application as well. It's also very expressive. I can type something to you, Andy, and, and you know it'll say something, but it could be quite sterile or misconstrued, or I could really emphasize something with inking or just drawing on it. And it's very personal as well, very unique. You know, yeah. something that I've been doing. And we've had this kind of disconnect, haven't we, between our old, the old-fashioned, if you like, paper and pen, which has, has that personality about it and, and the modern computing world. So wouldn't it be great if we could really get those to work well together? Yeah, and I'll tell you what's great. With Windows 10, it's as easy as pen and paper, but with the power of computer, that really gives us a lot of options on the other side. So we first give them the modality that people are used to, and then we can do so much more. So let's consider the power of digital ink. So first of all, it's worth saying that we're not just using a pen. So you certainly can use a pen. That's a full digitized pen that gives you that accuracy that you really like. But you can 
can also use a stylus, you know, that's, it's, uh, it basically acts as your finger, or you could use your finger, and you could ink that way as well. You may not have the fidelity or the detail control like you would with a pen, but you still have the option, which is really neat because it expands ink now to a whole whole well to everything to absolutely everything that has some sort of of interface some sort of pointer interface so either mouse or finger and so what what do you do with that ink is to is what you do next and that's why it's the power of a computer the first thing is i could just leave it as ink i deploy it or i send it off to you dispatch it i guess over to you and you get to see it as the ink and that that's the way it's expressed there are other things i could do i could add metadata to it you know for example search if you know what i mean and then you could also convert it so i could convert it to a shape you're drawing squares i need to I'd convert it to a proper square or maybe the text and I could read the text that you're doing as well so there's a lot of neat things that I can do not only because it's inking but because I have all of this power on the underside now so consider this I'm gonna work for a hotel and you're gonna be my guest and so I'll be the concierge and you come over and you say Jerry I'm looking for some vegetarian tacos yeah and so well uh, Mr. Wiggly, that's easy enough. You want to go right here. Now, I could have done this a handful of ways. I didn't, I could draw on the map or I could start explaining, you know, go here, turn left, go here, turn right, go here, two stoplights, then turn left again. And that would be the same directions that you would have otherwise. But how expressive is it and how accurate and accessible is it when I can draw it? Yeah. The other thing is, because this is digital, it allows me, I can zoom in, right? This is a vector drawing that I have, and so I can go at any level, and I don't lose any of the fidelity. But you can also see the thickness of the line changes here as well, because I could sense pressure if I want to. Of course, all of this is going to be hardware dependent. Not all hardware is going to, going to um, support a pin. You have to use a finger. Not all hardware is going to support pressure. You know, it just sort of depends. But when it does, it's a beautiful thing. And more and more hardware we're seeing really does have that support. So consider this, right? I could write out an email, and uh, this is really, exp I could write it right to you. This is sort of the perfect use case where I could send an email to you. And it's kind of neat, right? I could write it out so that I get the feel for it. But maybe that's not right for you. I could send it to you, but your, your application doesn't receive inking. So that's great, right? We're running this on a computer, and we have all kinds of functionality around it as well. So I could convert this then to text, and I can have it however it is that I want it to do. So again, it's as easy as pen and paper, but it's the power of a computer. A lot of neat things going on here. That's traditional, but here's sort of an untraditional traditional sort of use of inking. So I could go in, perhaps it's a game, and overlaid on this game, I have the inking canvas. So I can go in and draw things and say, look over here for this, look over here for this maze, don't forget the treasure is right here, where we might think a typical use case, now that inking can be anywhere on any device, we could start interacting and introducing it in all of our different applications. So it's very specific how it's, how it's introduced in Windows 10. So let's talk specifically about direct ink. So direct ink is the family of technologies. And so one of the cool and probably most important uh, aspects of direct ink is that it's low latency on every device. Yeah. That's, latency is a tricky thing. Yeah, that's, that's crucial, isn't it? Because that that's really is a crucial characteristic. Because when we draw with a pen, uh, we, we used to know latency. And, yeah. and anything noticeable is, is like a nuisance. And a yeah, if I'm drawing along and the line slowly follows my pen. Ah, yeah, that's, that's a bad experience. And that they, they reckon about 50 milliseconds. It, it seems to be the, the kind of thing that's not noticeable. And it needs to be less than that. So it's kind of demanding. And there are two aspects, too. You know, there's hardware latency and software latency. We can't do anything about the hardware latency. It is what it is. What we can do is the software latency. And so what you see in our implementation is the lowest possible software latency we can pull together all the way across devices, by the way. So I can run it on a, on a phone that's not a super powerhouse phone and still have a great experience with it. Yeah. Pretty neat. Yeah, and we're driving a lot, lot of the, the work with this gets driven to the, to the uh, graphics processing unit. So Direct, direct Ink is, is leveraging the direct, DirectX work of, the, you know, working on the GPU. So we're keeping that good responsiveness for the user on the UI thread, and then we're offloading a lot of this, this kind of hard recognition stuff off to the GPU. Important in this ink canvas, too, is not just that it can do simple ink, but also that it can do some complex or comprehensive things. So that pressure uh, sensitivity yeah. is really valuable, especially if you're building a type of app that maybe is a drawing application, and you really want to give the artist some control. But we also have palm recognition, because it's not unusual to drag your palm along on the screen, and you're not trying to draw a line at all, you're just dragging your palm along as you write. So that palm recognition, so that we can exclude that, is really important, and the support for 
for finger inking. So if you don't have a pen, you still have an option. That is just terrific as well. And so it's important to say this is very extensible. These are the basic functionality that are given to developers out of the box. But if you need to go that next level, you can absolutely do it. You can see where it's already been done in Office. We've already done that in OneNote. And so OneNote uses the same technology. So you can trust, not only does it work, but it works really well. And it has to be extensible because, as you know, OneNote really does a lot. Sure. Yeah. OK, so how, do we, how are we going to use this? It's, it's, it's wonderful how simple this is to use. I mean, honestly, right. it is. And uh, here it is, right? We have is the it? canvas. <laughs> okay. And we're done. All, All right, right, so yeah, enjoy us again. No, just kidding. Uh, and so <laughs> honestly, you add the ink canvas. And uh, from there, you know, you can extract the ink, save the ink, reload last session's ink, things like that. But as far as just enabling the drawing and having it work on the screen, you just make sure it has the right Z index, right? Because you want to have it over whatever it is you're sure. going to be writing. And uh, it's transparent. And so from that point forward, as the user tries to ink, um, it starts inking. Maybe it'd make more sense if I showed you in a demo. Yep. OK, so let me uh, set this up here. OK, so uh, let's just start. This is a blank application, nothing going on at all. I just want to add the ink canvas here for us. And so uh, I'll add ink canvas again, not an extension or anything. This is part of UAP. And I'll just close it up here. So it'll take up all the space that I put in. So this is the full grid. And now I'll just run it. So no extra functionality right now, just how quickly can I start implementing uh, inking inside an application? And I'm done. I can type or write hello here. And just like we saw before, I can start to zoom in. And you can see it's all vector drawn, so I get really high fidelity at any zoom level that I go to. And then I can ask the application from here, do you want to uh, translate this into text for me or, or uh, interpret it into text for me? Do I want to save this as a bitmap or whatever it is that's correct for me? But to just enable inking in my application, it's a single control that I just add, and it's ready to go. It's up to me, then, to determine which functionality of that control I'm going to use. Pretty straightforward, don't it's you think? Pretty easy, yep. yeah. Yeah, it good. really is. Yep. So we have the Ink Presenter. And so the Ink Presenter is behind it, a series of APIs that allows us to do all the advanced functionality of recognizing handwriting and uh, to, uh, you know, to save or restore any of that ink that we may have used from session to session, as well as change the color, change the thickness, things like that you might want to give a little bit more fidelity as well. So it right out of the box, you get it the way it is. And then if it's just not suiting your needs, the great news is it's right here. You can start um, you can start enhancing it and making it kind of fit the use case that you've decided fit. And it just it wasn't always on every device. Now it is, and it wasn't always really for every type of application. Now it is. We have this ink canvas that you can just drop on, and uh, not just traditional uses like you would in necessarily an email, but now you can have in these extended cases, like maybe in your game or maybe anywhere you can possibly think that the user could touch their screen, which is basically everywhere. Yeah, and uh, you can see great uses for like mobile workforce out police or any field workers who want to quickly take a device and quickly draw stuff, you know, it's going to be really powerful. It's just a quick way to communicate as well. You don't have to train people how to write. They already yeah. know how to write. Sure. And you don't have to train them how to look at handwriting and understand what's going on in a drawing. It's just really terrific. All right, this is the developer's guide to Windows 10 preview. We've been talking about the new ink canvas and the ability to add ink to any application on any device. Go take a look at it, add it to your own application, and see if it's something that you could use to extend value in your own app. Then come back and watch another module with us. Hi, welcome to this session of the Developer's Guide to Windows 10 Preview. I'm Andy Weekly. And this is Jerry. Jerry Nixon, right Jerry's, here. Okay. I'm from the United States, Andy. <laughs> You'd never have guessed. I'm from the UK. That doesn't matter. We've got a great session here talking about one of the exciting new controls that's available for uh, a Windows 10 UAP app development, the relative panel. That's right. It's neat to see something added to our XAML toolbox. This is a really important one, especially for the adaptive story. So in the Windows 10 adaptive story, we're going to talk through that and what our strategies are. And then we'll go into the relative panel specifically and how that plays a role in it. So let's start with the Windows 10 adaptive story. There's three things to really consider. And the first really starts with the design strategy. 
There's a lot you can do. We've learned this from web development, Andy. A lot we can do to really help um, make sure our application responds to changes in aspect ratio, width and size and things like that. Yeah, it's kind of web developers have, have known for a while that their pages are going to have to adapt to different orientations, to uh, different screen sizes, and they want to make sure, obviously, that the page looks great on as many devices as possible. Same for us app developers now, uh, with a UAP app that can run on all sort of kinds of small phone screens or tiny IoT devices, yeah. all the way up to 85-inch Surface Hub kind of displays. It's a, it's a wide spe spectrum of, of, of displays that you need to accommodate with your app. Another to piece of your toolbox when you're designing adaptive applications is the ability to take your XAML views and split them into multiple XAML files, but still maintain a single code behind or sing single uh, XAML controller behind the scenes. So that's nice. I can create one specifically, say, for mobile or one specifically, say, for desktop, and I don't have to worry about my XAML uh, declaration becoming too long, you know, so you can't really navigate a file like that or my tree, rendering tree, to be too large. And so there's a lot of values with that. And at the same time, another thing I can do is to um, use some of the enhancements of visual states. And so we know visual states have been around for a long time for XAML developers. Now you can use visual states with their custom setters, so we can set properties explicitly, as well as with the um, the adaptive triggers, so I can switch between visual states without any code. I can just set up the triggers that, that uh, define when a visual state is supposed to be selected. Pretty nice. Well, those are all the pieces of the strategy that don't have to do with the relative panel. Those are the other pieces. The relative yeah. panel will come soon. But let's just consider this visual for a second. So this is kind of an early visual of the way um, OneNote might look on different machines. But I think what's worth looking